Durak. I'm the Chief Operating Officer and Head of Customer Success for Solvoyo. We are a next generation platform that help clients manage their supply chains end to end, from demand all the way to delivery with little to no human intervention. Welcome. I have a question, a high level question for Britain. So Britain, when we look at the uh, US alone, right? Apparently we're wasting food that is uh, covering thousand pyramids, Egyptian pyramids worth of food every single year in uh, North America alone. So when you, when you look at the, what is it? Almost up to 40% of the globally produced food being wasted, you know, part of it at the production, about 13% is being wasted at the production level. 6% is wasted at the uh, initial storage and handling and another 6% being wasted at the distribution level. And then 8% is being wasted at homes. You know, if you check my fridge right now, God knows how many completely uh, bad uh, milk sitting in there. So when you look at this, what is it that we need to do from a sustainability perspective? And what are some of the trends that you see, you know, in the industry that not only deals with the growth aspect of supply chain, right? But also really more like social responsibility aspects of supply chain? Well, really the, the trend that I'm, I'm seeing, I, I began to notice it about five and six years ago when I had been doing some work in India and working with agriculture uh, organizations over there, farmers over there, because so much of their product was rotting in the field. And the thing that I've discovered is that there's more of an attention to detail now. There's more of an awareness of the need for transparency and visibility across the supply chain. But really the main thing is, is understanding the concept of backwards planning, hmm. basically shelf backwards, field backwards from, from the field to the, to the fork. And that's just simply putting in much better project management. Uh, that's, that's putting in more controls in place to where people are understanding. We really have to look uh, very broadly across agriculture to identify all these things that are going wrong. What technology can we use? What better management can we use to solve it? But in a lot of countries globally, they simply don't have the infrastructure yet. Uh, in the places I travel to throughout India and Asia, for example, in many of those countries, they have no cold chain facilities, nothing. Uh, the product, if it's ready to be harvested, they can only harvest what they have available. Uh, what equipment they can use. And if they don't get it done, it just absolutely sits there and rots. We're in, well, now what India is doing is saying, we have, to, we have to really invest in this. So India is going to be investing about $150 billion over the next five years on a lot of things related to infrastructure. Part of that's going to be agriculture. So this is not something we're going to solve overnight, but it is something that can be solved. And we know it can be solved because in the U.S., we have really, you know, industry-leading agriculture practices. Brazil has industry-leading agriculture practices. And so a lot of this stuff is just simply going to be transferred to China, India, and other regions of the world. And then, of course, through the technology platforms that are available, much better supply chain platforms, much better understanding of how to really manage everything involved in the harvesting process. Yep. So that's really what I'm expecting to happen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, absolutely. And when you look at now, Mike, when you kind of like bring it down to a micro level, right, there is this uh, consumer need for freshness, right? And then the supply chains have to really kind of like manage the need for freshness against availability and also cost. So can you walk us through like what are some of the things that you have seen as a practitioner dealing with the whole freshness issue? Because then it is directly linked to how you manage waste. Yeah, absolutely. That's a great question. Um, the, the pressure of availability on supply chains can cause some decisions with unintended consequences, uh, waste being one of those. Um, Asena and Britain both talked about, you know, end to end thinking, end to end visibility. Um, and in the fresh supply chain, I believe that's absolutely paramount. Um, I love the backwards planning that Britain just talked about because it is something where the work that, that I undertook um, previously in my career, we started with what does the consumer, what does the end consumer want when it's in terms of 
how long strawberries, as an example, will stay in their refrigerator. And, you know, we be able to get, come back with an answer to say six days. And then you say, okay, well, well how many days does the strawberry actually have before it's, you know, smoothie red, red, <laughs> smoothie ready. And it's one of those things where it's like, well, it could be 10, 12 or 14 days. And it's, there's variability there. Well, if a customer wants six days and you only have 12, that tells you what the supply chain has to do in the time that it needs to do that. And not everything is around the corner from the field. So I think some of the, the key things that, that we encountered um, as we went through this was, um, number one, getting the organization to think end to end. That was a massive change management um, uh, uh, work piece of work um, because not everybody won. Right? There were puts and takes that happened throughout the design um, as, we, as we implemented a solution that ultimately was aimed at reducing food waste, um, but I couldn't sacrifice availability. Um, I couldn't grow inventory. Um, I had to reduce time, right? So you have all of these different things that seem competing, but in the end, what your leadership wants is they want to see that top line growth, as we talked about earlier. They want to see a minimal or no impact on your bottom line. And the customer needs to see fresher product at the same rate of availability. Um, end end thinking became really critical. The, the second was to really look at the supply chain and say, what are some of the self-imposed constraints that we have that we need to rethink? And where we found the supply chain to be very rigid, to be um, really locked in, uh, we really had to understand whether or not we could, through technology, through data, um, through process, be able to unlock that constraint, be able to remove it. Uh, that was another key piece for us. The third was uh, really working with the, the growers, the farmers, the suppliers to make sure that we were integrating effectively with them. That was another key piece. And Britton, you touched on this a little bit yourself. It, you, this would not be a field to fork solution if we didn't work with them. Um, I found myself in the strawberry fields, uh, not to try to get all beetles on us here, but, but yeah, to, to, you know, to be uh, in the strawberry fields, eating strawberries, um, you know, eating mustard greens, whatever, and, and really working with them to understand, hey, this, what are you up against that I don't have any visibility to that I need to appreciate? And as we, as we unraveled that, we understood where technology could solve, where data was incredibly important, where ongoing collaboration was, was critical as well. Um, the, the, the end result for us was, uh, was fantastic. It was one that exceeded even my expectations of what we were able to do. Um, it was counterintuitive. Uh, the design was counterintuitive, uh, but, um, in the end, that's what we needed. Now, this is, this is why change management is so critical. It's not just applying the best technology, but how do you really marry that with, uh, you know, the process change and, you know, much more continuous improvement mindset. So we'll come to that too. Let me just ask Asana, what is the strawberry fields uh, beetle moment for the technology then? Because when you take the strawberries as an example, right, how do we, how do we plan for all the complexities that Mike is uh, describing to manage availability, manage working capital, i.e. inventory, and also manage waste. Yes, uh, so definitely devil is in the detail here. And the detail is so complex, it is not really humanly possible uh, to manage this. So now uh, we, we're looking at using advanced models like optimization models that can address uh, whatever your goal is, right? A cer certain service level target that you want to achieve, subject to all of the constraints and the costs associated with it, and give you a kind of more holistic point of view in your total cost to serve. So when your uh, strawberry category manager insists that you're going to be in 99.5% available, right? Not to disappoint the strawberry customers, they can now understand what's the cost associated with it, right? So much is going to go to waste. I'm going to incur waste because of this. I'm I have to, you know, invest in additional uh, refrigerated storage. 
I need to make more frequent deliveries, right, in order to meet the fresh uh, expectation as well, since, you know, they only have six days to go. Uh, I need to be replenishing them more frequently. So when you're trying to make these decisions, like how much inventory I need to have in the store, uh, how much do I need to ship, how frequently I have to ship, when all of these decisions are being made in silo, you're not going to achieve that total uh, goal for the company, which is ultimately the bottom line, right? We don't want to, well, of course, we want to be proud of serving our customers with strawberries, but we can't just do it at the cost of losing money to make the strawberry customers happy. So with optimization models, you can actually get to that uh, answer, like what is given the realities, given all of the operational realities, given all the logistics implications, given the customer expectations to understand the trade-off so you can actually make informed decisions instead of just going with a single KPI, such as availability being the goal, looking at it more from a, um, comp a more holistic point of view and understanding, well, if I try to attain this, this is the cost. If I try this other scenario, this is the cost. So which one are we going to, which is the best model for our company? And as I said in the beginning, Doing that type of analysis in Excel spreadsheets <laughs> is not really feasible. So that's why technology needs to step in uh, and the silos need to be broken because this is not a single person's problem. As you suggested, Mike, there are so many different dimensions and aspects to it. And all of those dimensions need to come together in a single uh, model and in a single source of truth. Mm -hmm.